So, so you get out of there, you get out of uh, you know your time in, uh, in being a PJ. So you went to the two, three, and you got some deployments. I always ask guys that, that went there kind of on that first push, man, what was it like? Like when you were getting ready to go, when, when September 11th happened. So what, what's your September 11th story? Because that's what kicks off this deployment. Yeah, right. Were you already so, at the two, three? Uh, yeah. So uh, okay. Jason Kemp, is KP still in? I don't, know, or, so I don't, I don't think he's, he, I'm pretty sure he's out I don't now. Think so. So, uh, Jason, we had just done like a run, swim, run, you know, so for, you know, at Herbie, the two, three, three compound right there on independence, you run out, you swim across the sound, you come back and you run. And, you know, we had, we had just changed, showered up over in the wall, the old locker room and gone over to the reef, which is like the little, uh, defect. Little chow hall. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, by the way, it's still there and it's still oh, the best place to eat. <laughs> it's still the best place. It's still the best defect in, on Herbie. So, yeah. So we're eating, we're eating chow and think we see like they're showing reports it, it wasn't live at that time they were so of the first uh tower being hit and we're like mm-hmm. oh shit uh so like something's going on let's roll back to the squadron we go back to the squadron and of course everybody is gathered around in the the, the ops building right or the right. ops desk everybody is watching the tvs you know just that's where the TV what is. going on that's the tv's at right and uh i think we were all in there and we saw the second one hit like live um, everybody at, like at this point is freaking out. Um, and I remember real specific, I don't know if it was the, right then or before the Pentagon was hit, Kurt Buller was the DO at the time and he walks in and he goes, pack your bags. We're going to war boys. Like literally he said it like and starship I, troopers. He, I was going to ask if it was like, super, get your stuff. We're going to war. Yeah. He's a super intense guy. And when he talks, you sh- you listen, you know, and he's just like it, you know, I'm just talking like it, you know, freaking stud collegiate wrestler at the Academy honor grad at ranger school like you know like when i was like always like at that i was like oh, right he's just you know we're going to war we're going to war because right. he said it i mean everybody already <laughs> had their shit you know in their cages but like we all ran out and like people it's a, it was insanity of the unknown it's like do we need zodiacs i don't know like it'd be like, like you see a dude like running through the compound with like a 50 horse over his arm and <laughs> another guy's got ammo cans I'm like, where are we going with what this? Are we, shit? What are we know, doing, like, guys? I don't know what we're doing, but get something. Pick it up. I yeah, need help. get something. I mean, I remember we were there pretty late that night, went home, and it was like, hey, I told my wife, I was like, I lived over in Commando Village, so I had to leave the main base. And I was mm-hmm. like, we need to get back on. I mean, I need to go back because I need to finish packing out my bag. I was like, so I need like the stuff that I didn't have there, like deodorant, toothbrush. Let's, you know, I had some of sure. that. Book. So we went back on the base that night, and I think I don't think the machine gun nests were up yet, but it was a it was a pain getting through the gate. The next morning, um, I get a phone call at the house, like, "Hey, man, you might want to ride your bike to work because uh, you don't want to drive." So I hopped on my mountain bike, and the line was all the way up whatever that road is that comes out that that gate. Yeah, uh, ninety eight. Yeah, no, not all, all the way to Mary Esther. All the way to Mary Esther. Oh, okay. Back. Yeah, and. No kidding. It was a standstill. Like every car was inspected. And I don't mean like the quick, like it was like the full up. Nobody knew there was a machine gun nest at every gate. Uh, so, you know, I got through it. Of course, we're getting briefings, we're trying to get intel what's going on. Um, and, you know, long story short, we don't actually push out of town for a few weeks after that. But we're on the first list. I mean, you had like dudes that were at that time we were had Southcom was our AO. We had guys in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, who got recalled like the seals are sitting there like where are you going man can we go with you as guys are like packing their bags to come back recalled in the two three so we can deploy um wow. I, I think i had this written down here because i was looking at my notes the other day but um here's the time like this is the bad thing we're all bad at so all you out there listening as you're just starting your careers you know i know this sounds really stupid keep a journal like write yeah. this stuff down because like you're 20 years from now you're like when did i go and i'm like piecemealing it for like pictures and stuff what day was it i'm looking at orders you know, it's not, you're not going to care now, but like your kids, somebody's going to care at some point. So we were in country. Um, you know, we all hopped on like a C-17 and we got out of here and I've got pictures of us that, you know, it's all grainy because it's not in digital. It's like old school. You took it with a potato. Yeah. yeah. You took it with a disposable camera. They well, used to, was, Hey everybody. So they had, they had cameras. Yeah. And they, they used to, they had disposable ones and they were like wrapped in cardboard and you would go to weddings and they would, they would be there. And then you'd have to get those pictures developed. Like you couldn't just look at them. You had like to take th- that's actual what cameras good pictures. Were. There's no filters. You had to take actual good pictures. Or There's you no filters. Out. There's no <laughs> filters. Like little stars floating by your head, you know. No filter. You couldn't be like, yeah, exactly. Um, so we got the ooze back, and uh, you know, I think 
you know, we, we won the first flight. So we got there, there was right. nothing, bare bones. It was like us, fifth group, and, uh, you know, some AC-130s. But, like, there's not even a defect. We were eating MREs the first couple months. We didn't have a shower. We had some of those, right. like, sun bags you, like, hang up. Um, yep. Remember, there's this weirdo we had, Greg Waldheim. Name <laughs> <laughs> so just, dro- Waldo, just drop all of them yeah, all of them they drop them because he's I, I he's totally out um or maybe uh so we just dug a hole that was your latrine right and like waldo's out there like literally just taking a two and he's got he oh there was like a nail you take your own personal roll of toilet paper because like everybody had their own and it was gone it mm-hmm. was gone then you were down to the mre toilet paper which is terrible right oh, it's like terrible it's great for woodwork john you know john wayne toilet paper <laughs> It's, yeah. That's that John Wayne toilet paper. It's yeah. not taking shit off of anybody. If you're you know what I mean? Building like a table and you use some sandpaper, it's great. But that's about it. So, like, literally, <laughs> but there's no curtain. There's no container around this. You know, it's just a hole. It's like two pieces of two by fours that we we made like a seat for out your of. feet. Right. Yeah. I mean, like you could totally see. You know, snake ropes, 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 man, and and <laughs> <laughs> fast ropes out. And I guess uh, apparently some some female walked by at some point. And this was behind the haz. It was like obviously in a discreet location, but not discreet enough. Waldo's right. out there, you know, doing his business and uh, some female sees it. And uh, uh, from then on, we had to construct some kind of with somebody gave up their whoopee poncho liner to build like a, <laughs> you know, a wall around this thing. But that's how it was for the first couple of weeks. Like, and then, you know, of course, we're everybody's doing, you know, prep stuff and. Uh, and what I'm about to get into, you know, some more on the serious note, but is like, you know, so we started putting teams in and I think, I don't know if I was on the first flight or one of the other, um, CSAR teams with, uh, FE, he just made chief by the way. Um, yeah. yep. he was on the first flight. Saw. So I think he might've been on the first flight. Uh, but anyway, we got shot at the first two nights, um, like going across the border. This is back when, you know, like the unknown, right? So we, people, we were test fire the mini guns, you know, um, Cross across the border, uh, Mo Mo just retired. Seth, he shot his. You heard this, Peaches. The story. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yes. Send it. Story yes. time with AT yes. is getting it's, spicier it's, and spicier. It's, it's, can I say this? Is Mo retired now? I, I'm pretty sure he's retired now. Yeah. Yeah. So when he when we test fired weapons, you know, like dude, test fires his two or three off the back of the ramp of the forty seven. <laughs> Solid. Right as we're Solid. right as we're crossing, like in into you know from the north so, uh, that was awesome man so good dude i love you know uh he's a guy that hold, always holds a small um red bull can because it makes him look bigger he got the he's got this com- complex nice he's nobody a loud, is, it- loud italian nobody is safe today by the way so i love you know um the guy you think he can fight so aaron Dude, this guy, you know, he's a big pussy. He's a softie. I'm like, I don't. I, I remember <laughs> at AJ's once, like some guy was beating on his girl. I was like, we're walking across the parking lot to AJ's, and of course we're like, yo, hey, dude, and he's like, f you to me, and then Mo's like, sure. hey, man, and then Corey, it's like, oh, because Mo's a big guy, so he's like, at that time he's like, okay, I'm like. Duke can't even fight. I mean, like you can't. He's, he's a teddy bear. What's, what's he gonna do? Hug you to death? He, Snuggle you? He doesn't. He doesn't jits, man. He just he, he, just, he just uses his he just uses his size. <laughs> he doesn't jits, Toby. So there you so there you guys so there you guys were for the first couple weeks, and then how long was that first deployment? Dude, it was like six months, man. So some notable stuff that happened, obviously, uh, that I want to get out there is, uh, you know, at first we're putting in these uh, ODA teams, you know, fifth group guys, and they were kicking ass. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think that's when they were like realized they weren't the technical experts on how to use air power. And if it wasn't for this deployment and, uh, you know, and guys like Kurt Buller who were like, dude, we need a JTAC out with every team. That's it. That was so influential for the last 20 years. How J nobody yeah. knew what a JTAC was. The right. world would not know what a JTAC was had it not been for that the stuff that went down in that deployment they're like no we need an air force dude out with those with those army guys and yeah. you guys guys like charlie mike you know just like killing dudes like the plague like like one b-52 strike killing more people than the omicron ever will you know like just <laughs> mowing them down uh and then lb i just saw something the other day there's a guy that wrote a book uh it's called the first casualty uh, uh toby harden he's a he's a brit uh, check it out um it's on amazon but uh he's posted he posts something like every day on ig like a picture he's got all these pictures because 
we, um, I carried out Mike Spann's body, you know? So when the prison uprising happened, Mazar Sharif, you know, back in late November of that year, you know, he was the first American, you know, killed. Um, and a lot of people don't count that because he wasn't a uniform wearing guy at the time, but no, he was first dude killed in combat, you know, CIA dude, Mike Spann right there. We care. We had his body on the 47. I remember we landed back in Uzbek and there'd been one other guy that technically that was killed, but it was due to an accident. He actually got, and you know, it sucks, man. He was a CE guy. He got kind of crushed, uh, by some, uh, some equipment. So he's the first mm-hmm. real person that died, but like in combat, Mike Spann, we land the, the 47 and the fifth group chaplain there, you know, and they got a flag. I mean, it's like, it was pretty somber. It's like, dude, I mean, since the towers fell, this is like the first American soul lost in combat. So, right. um, uh, it, it was, it was pretty uh, sobering. And then, you know, a, like a week later I pulled out a uh, score in those dudes, uh, a bunch of fifth group dudes from the, uh, the friendly fire thing. So, it's kind of interesting, man. I've been listening to your precision strike stuff, uh, PJs, and how nine lines, you know, that time I'm like, I knew ECAS as a J, maybe, you know, right. like you, this is me, this is direct description. But now it's like the entire J fire and joint publication 3093, how we do CAS nine line procedures changed because of a few incidents that happened. That was one of those, like, no longer put in friendly position as coordinates, you know, because <laughs> um, right. some stuff happened there. But it was that was another one that sucked. So literally, one of my own bros from the two three, a controller. Um, we land in Maja Sharif. We're getting, you know, these wounded guys out of there. Uh, that this five hundred pound bomb had had you know messed up, and it's one of my own guys comes on on the aircraft. So that was like holy shit. So a dude that I know is effed up, uh, and he ended up being all right, man. He's a PA now. He's he's rocking it, man. He's like, I think he's a colonel or tenor colonel, but uh, out in Aviano. But good for him, man. So if Mike, if you're listening. Uh, uh, hope to see you again. It's been, it's been way too long, dude. Good, dude. Tons of shout outs. I don't know if anybody's going to hear it. I, I, I make this I joke know. all the time. You can say whatever you want on here. Nobody listens. No one watches it. <laughs> no one watches uh, this stuff. No. Man, this is, like well, a, this is like a reunion, man. So, yeah. So after that deployment, go ahead, man. What do you want to hear about? Yeah, man? no, I, I just... 